Odin, the Lord of Madness and Rage, leader of the North Pantheon verse, reigning as one of the chief gods and is one of the main antagonists in the series, expected to be the final boss at this rate. Odin is a quiet, intelligent, menacing god with an overwhelming presence wherever he goes. Armed with his divine weapon, Gunnir, and is willing to eradicate almost anyone who stands in his way, the question to be asked is, what is Odin's true desire from Ragnarok based on what we've seen him scheme so far? As the tournament proceeds and humanity's fate hangs in the balance, the goal of Odin looms like a puzzle waiting to be solved and revealed. Hey guys, it's your boy French Fry Warrior, and we have gathered here today to discuss about Odin's true motive slash desire. This video will obviously include spoilers, so if you aren't caught up with the manga, I recommend you do so. Thank you, I appreciate all y'all, and without further delay, enjoy the video. Previously, in my last theory video, he gets ready to scrap with Beelzebub and warns him not to f this opportunity up with his BS experiments because he's been waiting for this chance. That shows you how this man is planning something big. Honestly, his goal is most likely to become the only chief god. This plan would involve killing or overthrowing Zeus, since he's the only chief god that could contest him, with Hades being dead now and Shiva not being strong enough to contest Odin. During chapter 85, we first learn about what Odin's actual goal might be, and his reaction seems like Beelzebub most likely got it correct. What spurred Beelzebub to inquire about Odin's goal is when in chapter 54, Odin slipped up and instructed Beelzebub after the Hadrian incident to not disrupt Ragnarok because this battle has been a long wish of his. Now, Beelzebub being curious off of that statement, went to do some digging and the info he found is pretty shocking. Beelzebub theorized that Odin plans to restore the Arche of the Cosmos and the resurrection of the Primordial God. And his theory is further backed up when in chapter 88, he reveals he discovered a book in the libraries of Helheim about the resurrection of the primordial gods. And one paragraph stated, at the moment the water of life is absorbed by the world tree and Odin offers up his body with both eyes, the world will return once more to its origin. Now, although Odin didn't outright confirm it, his reaction says otherwise, and we're gonna assume that Beelzebub is correct for the most part. So next, let's break down the stuff Beelzebub revealed. Within that same chapter, we are shown that primordial gods were born from the beginning of the universe. They had a great power that allowed them to create life within the universe, making them the progenitor of everything and ruler of the cosmos. However, their power proved to be too great for their body and they self-destructed. Rumor has it that they return to the chaos of the beginning. With that world building established, we can assume that Odin plans to become a primordial god and bring back the Arche of the cosmos. First thing first, with some quick research, the word Arche is defined as a Greek word meaning first principle, origin, or beginning, referring to Odin's desire to be the creator of chaos aka the beginning of the universe. How will he achieve this? Well, the prophecy states the moment the water of life is absorbed by the world tree and Odin offers up his body with both eyes, the world will return once more to its origin. Let's begin to analyze this. We already discussed that Odin seeks to be the supreme ruler, primordial god with ultimate power after resetting the universe to its origin. What does the water of life mean though? Well, we can infer that the water of life is basically referring to blood, because blood is a water-like quality and is the very reason everyone is alive. Next, absorbed by the world tree. It's a little tricky. The world tree is known as a Yajrasil in Norse mythology and is a giant ash tree that is set to connect the nine realms. Now to my knowledge, I don't think we got introduced to that world tree yet unless it's that big tree we saw Buddha under when Zeus approached him, but alas, we won't know till later. Next we have is Odin will offer up his body with both his eyes, 
and this is where I think Odin is having trouble fulfilling the prophecy. I can see Odin is willing to sacrifice his body to become a primordial god, but look what it says. Both eyes. Currently, to our knowledge, he has only one eye because he wears an eye patch. I believe that if he had both eyes, then he would have went through with this plan already without the need for Ragnarok. I'll explain a bit more about this idea later in the video. Odin may require some special eyes. If he needed normal eyes, he could have just taken them from some fodder god. Maybe one of the fighter's eyes might be key to this because to be honest, a good amount of human fighters has had some eyes with some special abilities. He might pull some Uchiha eye switching method and use their eyes for the world tree. However, the flaw in this thinking is him banking on his fighter having special eyes. Unless that's where Siegfried might come into play and help him achieve that goal. But I digress. Combining everything we talked about, we can come to the conclusion that Odin plans to sacrifice his body to the world tree by giving it his blood and both eyes to gain primordial god power and bring back the origin of the universe. This fits with his North mythology because originally he impaled himself on the world tree to gain knowledge and wisdom. Now I'm not saying this will happen word for word as the authors of Ragnarok has subverted our expectations many times and certain gods don't act exactly like their mythos counterpart. This is all just a prediction based on what I know. As I hinted earlier, Odin does need Ragnarok for some reason since he stated he waited a long time for this battle. At first, I did just believe he wanted to overthrow Zeus, which would really only involve killing him. However, lately his true goal is starting to reveal itself. Based on what we know so far, Odin doesn't require the fighters who already fought in Ragnarok. He just needs the whole thing to play out. I'm assuming with a god's victory too. This is further supported when he was willing to exterminate Buddha and Beelzebub, both fighters who had already did their matches. And at the same time, after Thor's intervention, he was content with just letting Ragnarok finish. Based on what Zeus said to him about Ragnarok in chapter 34, things do seem to be going well for Odin, especially after his malicious smile. This confirms that things are going as planned, aside from Buddha and Beelzebub interrogating him. What could Ragnarok provide for him? Once again, I can only infer it might allow him to get the eyes that he needs, or this is where Siegfried can come into play. Plus, I believe Ragnarok helps Odin get rid of some potential oppressors that could have posed a threat to his plans, like Poseidon, Heracles, or the other chief god Hades. But with them out the way, he becomes more confident in his plans. Lastly, why would Odin do all this? Well, let's think about it. Based on his mannerisms, he's doing all this to be the sole ruler of the cosmos. I doubt he wants to use the power to resurrect someone dear to him. Odin already almost views all the other characters as lesser than him. He's probably more likely to wipe up the current universe, start anew, and reign over that new universe as their one and only god. He may have some other motives, but this is the best I can think of. If this is true, this confirms my earlier theory from the playback video earlier in the vid where I talked about Odin playing something after Ragnarok. Originally, after reading the passage Beelzebub found, I thought it was Odin sacrificing his body for a primordial god to use him as a vessel or for some Kaguya stealing Madara's body or a schooner taking Megami's body. And I've read some people's thoughts in the comments who mentioned that Odin might sacrifice himself during his match as a method to revive the primordial god, which is definitely plausible, not knocking them. But Odin seems to be a selfish god that does things for his own benefit. I don't see him willingly giving up everything for a primordial god. With that being said, concerning both Thor and Loki, I'm not sure if either of them know of his plan, but I believe that Thor will retaliate against his plan, seeing as how his match with Lubu pulls him out of a deep depression and now sees humans as honorable beings. I discussed this deeper in my Thor vs Lubu analysis that you should check out 
to learn more about Thor. As for Loki, I originally would have said he would be down with this plan or try to steal Odin's power, but now within that same chapter, we see Loki reveal his love obsession for Brunhilde and most likely doesn't want her to die. So who knows, he may defy Odin to save Brunhilde. Maybe we might get Loki and Thor versus Odin, but that's just a little bit of a stretch. And it's also just a theory that may never come to fruition. The next concern is what happened to the previous primordial gods. Legend states that they self-destructed from their immense power, very similar to how Heijun did. So how will Odin fare any differently? Does he have a backup plan to not fade away? Who knows, that's just something we'll just have to wait to be revealed. Siegfried's part in all this is something that also has to be answered later on because we don't know if he's friend or foe and how he might play into the whole scheme. At this point, I'm going with the idea that Odin has Siegfried locked up because he knows of Odin's plans and wants to stop it from coming to fruition. So Odin had him locked up in Tartarus, which Buddha sees as an unnecessary punishment for such a crime. However, upon seeing him, we don't see a sense of urgency to escape from Tartarus from him, so who knows what his motives might be. Finally, all we know is that Odin doesn't like Buddha and Kentucky trying to break Siegfried out, and dislikes Beelzebub for getting in his business and exposing his motives. Alright, I think I covered everything, there's truly a lot to theorize about Odin's desire or plan, which is one of the reasons I love Ragnarok. The authors really know how to get us to think of every possible scenario and still manages to throw us for a loop. I am willing to admit that some of these points might be a stretch or wrong, but remember, I'm only giving my interpretation based on the information given. If you have any different thoughts on the matter or different predictions, then let me know in the comments below. And let's have a civil discussion about it, please. Can't wait to hear your opinions and thoughts, but alas, that's all I have for y'all today. You are now free back into reality, and don't forget to subscribe to show your support and like the video as well. If you don't, there is a 0.0000002 chance that I will personally send Odin to your place and have you exterminate you like an ant. But don't let that pressure scare you into subbing or liking the video. And with that out of the way, I'll see y'all later. Stay safe out there. Peace.